What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be doing a champion spotlight on one of these fusion champions. Today we're going to pick Baroth. He's a really cool champion, I'm excited to show you guys about him. So let's get right into it by going over his kit and seeing if you guys actually have a use for this champion and if he's going to be one of the ones worth it if you are skipping this fusion. So Baroth the Blood Soak is an HP based barbarian, by far the coolest champion as far as looks go in this entire fusion. Correct me if I'm wrong, there are a few really cool looking rares. However, as far as aesthetics go, I'm really impressed with what they did with this champion. Helmet looks really cool. I like the blood soaking on him, I guess. I see what they did with the words there. Although it does look a little bit like paint now that I look at it in the front. However, let's go over the skills and not dwell too much on the looks, even though that's a huge part of this game. We have an A1 attacking two times, the first hit having a chance to fill this champion's turn meter, the second hit having a chance of decreasing the enemy's turn meter. This isn't huge, however, this can prove to be very helpful, and he's going to be very strong in a very certain aspect of this game, and I'm excited to show you guys because I think it's going to help quite a lot of people. Moving on to his A2 here, attacks one enemy two times, the first hit places a shield equal to 25% of the damage inflicted on all allies for two turns, the second hit heals all allies by 10% of the damage inflicted. There's a lot of really cool utility here, even though this attack is a single target hit on one enemy, I really like what Plarium did here, how they're giving you a reward even though your damage dealing position only makes it so you're focusing one target. You are gaining this reward of providing your entire team with some type of benefit. I think this is a step into the right direction and they should make lots of champions with this idea in mind, especially in a support role. Moving on to A3 attacks one enemy two times and this is an interesting ability. This has the chance to placing an attack down and removing any increased attack buff from the target and the second hit has a chance of placing a defense down and removing any increased defense. Now this is kind of a strange interaction here and it's very very specific. I would have liked to see removing any buff for both of these or removing any offensive buff for the first hit, any defensive buff for the second hit and they could clarify that in game. I think that would have been a lot cooler for this guy's kit since they did so well with that A2 ability. This is the champion so far and if you didn't pick it up it's really hard to understand this by just reading the skills so once i show you the run you will understand what i'm saying or i'm about to say here this guy is like a miscreated monster but for every other dungeon besides spider the miscreated monster is extremely dominant in the spider dungeon however he does run into some problems in other dungeons because ally protection while it is strong it can lead to him dying very quickly very early since he is stacking full damage pretty much to make sure he gets that shield on his whole team. So in a sense what Baroth is doing is he is doing less damage. He is providing an AoE shield and an AoE heal on a three turn cooldown but he has this A1 that really benefits this champion's kit as far as making it so he can cycle through his cooldowns a lot quicker than a miscreated monster. As mentioned before, with his kit, I did build him like a miscreated monster, giving him an immortal set as well as a savage set, kind of makes Jarm doing damage. However, I did find out that you don't really need to build this guy with crazy damage to make his kit work since he can cycle through all of the skills rather quickly with that A1 having a chance to decrease the turn meter, fill his own turn meter, and cycle through his cooldowns. As far as masteries go, I elected to go with Helm Smasher and pretty much every beneficial mastery that can help out a shield. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take him in a Dragon 20 run and we are going to show you his potential in that dungeon, how big of a carry this champion actually can be. All right, so this is the team we are going to use today. It's kind of a random team and I didn't put a lot of thought into how I was going to make this. Obviously Venus with that HP aura is nice. Not the highest in the game that would be champ for it, but he doesn't really have a place in this dungeon. We have the defense on the weekend. We have the increased crit damage and Fushan just to help with some wave clear. So let's take this for a spin and see how we do in this Dragon 20. Now let's start this run out and put it on one time speed just so we can kind of see what the basic rundown is going to be here. We're going to have the stun coming out. We have Relentless proc there. 
increase the crit damage. Now let's see what bar this is going to use first. So this is the shield. It's not that big right now. But we're going to see as the dungeon progresses and how big this shield actually can get. So 75,000 damage, like I said, he's not doing an insane amount of damage. But the main takeaway that I want you guys to realize is HP supports in this game are the best supports in the entire game. The fact that you have an enemy placing defense down, attack down, really, really limits the utility the rest of your champions can actually have. So with that being said, the fact that this guy's cycling cooldown so often, as we can see the shield already ramping up to be rather sizable, especially in a progression format and setting. And once again, the fact that he's going to be cycling through these cooldowns over and over again. But back to my point before, these enemies are placing defense down, attack down. This has no effect on an HP based champion. If you have a defensive based champion where you're really trying to get some solid damage out, it's going to be extremely crippled once it gets hit with that defense down. Because not only is he going to take more damage, it's reducing the amount of damage he does by a significant amount. There is no reduce HP besides reducing the max HP, which isn't as common to see. And it's not a debuff, it's a long lasting thing that does reset as the rounds progress. That's something to consider. That's why I'm a huge fan of HP supports. And it's unfortunate that there aren't too many great ones. I think this guy is an absolutely fantastic support. Because as we can see, and I've said it multiple times already, he's cycling through his cooldowns simply because he has that additional benefit of boosting his own turn meter with that A1 ability. And now this was my point about Miscreated Monster. If Miscreated Monster puts up the ally protection here and you for some reason are unable to break the shield in any type of dragon progression, that will be a condition for a failure in your Dragon 20 runs. I've seen it before on my second account that I've made when I was first starting, and it was a real pain whenever that would happen. We would put up ally protection, the dragon would use his inhale effect, and miscreated monster would get one shot based on the damage all of my other champions were taking. This guy kind of takes that edge off. He simply cycles through his shields. He also provides that healing and it's instant healing. It's not based on the champion getting a turn like a continuous heal in case there is threatening oncoming damage and that champion won't have a chance to go again. But as we can see here, Fushan obviously being the wave clear doing 2 million. Orlin Frost King, very hard defensive hitting champion doing 495,000 also with an AOE ability. Now we have Baroth the Blood Soap simply there to provide some damage but using his damage to provide the utility of that constant shield being applied to your team as well as that heal so this is why i was so impressed with this champion straight out the gate he's going to be gigantic for faction wars for sure especially for barbarians if you don't have someone like a sky touch shaman healing your team this guy is definitely going to be the answer is there's definitely a lack of healers in the Barbarians, you do have Sile of Drakes. However, I would definitely prefer this guy. He's the safer choice in my opinion. Even without a res, this is just making it so your runs go smooth. You have someone applying damage now, a shield. So this guy can really round out a lot of rosters here. And in my opinion, this guy is fantastic. If you are early game, if you are end game, there is no reason not to go after this champion. If it is feasible for you with the amount of resources you have, if you can kind of pre-plan ahead which you definitely should be doing for this fusion this guy is going to be worth it for you in progression he's another red affinity champion most of your starters will be blue affinity so he's going to help alleviate some pressure once you start getting to those red affinity progression stages and there's definitely just a lot to this guy now another really strong shining point of this champion splattering hacks this is that a2 that applies that shield and it also applies the heal to everybody now, if you want to make an arena team with this champion, this is something I kind of thought about. He has actually a very good synergy with someone like a Skull Crown. He is fast enough to be able to cycle through and Skull Crowns usually, you're going to build them very slow so they get that counter attack. But the biggest problem with this Skull Crown is sometimes they don't heal up and they don't counter attack, which can definitely put your team at risk. So if you decide to use Baroth in the arena only, 
There's a set that I honestly haven't used a lot, but I would consider it for this guy, and it would be Avenging or Retaliation, having a 25% chance to counter attack when hit on top of the defensive tree and the support tree. Or you can use the set Avenging, 30% chance to counter attack when hit with a critical hit. Now, I know you might be thinking, what's the use of counter attacking if the heal is on that A2? Well, it's the fact that he can reduce the turn meter and increase his own turn meter. Over and over again with this, pairing him up with someone like one or two Skull Crowns, a Skull Crusher, and Barath the Blood Soak, that is two Red Affinity Champions, two Void Affinity Champions in an arena mostly full of blue or magic affinity champions, you're going to have a very easy time in the arena if you do choose to use this guy. And really quickly going over his base stats since I haven't gone over it yet, as we can see here we have 20,000 health, which isn't crazy, but we have to keep in mind he is a epic, but not only an epic, a fusion epic. And I've never really talked about this before, but fusion epics, I believe, are statistically made a lot worse than normal epics because everyone has an easier chance of getting them than they would while pulling from shards. On top of this, we have 1.1 thousand defense, which is definitely good to see. I would have hated to see kind of like the other champions I saw, especially Fane, having such low defense, really lowering the value of that champion as a whole. So we do see the 1.1 thousand defense, which is very strong for an HP champion. 98 speed, nothing to complain about. He does have the lower threshold of critical damage, and I really would have loved to have seen him with that 63% high threshold crit damage. I think it would have improved this kit significantly since he does rely a little bit on damage to provide support to your team. You can definitely use worse stats than I have. 100% crit rate, stacking as much HP as possible, not neglecting defense too much since it's fairly easy. As you can see, I only have 595 defense as I focus mostly on HP and he was still taking barely any damage from that Dragon 20 wave. So overall, if I had to say, if you want to go for Fane, you can definitely do that if you have a use for her. But Bear out the Blood Soap, I think he can be a very strong tool for a lot of people, especially in the early to mid game, whether it be Faction Wars, Dungeon Progression. Probably won't have a use in Clan Boss since he does have the opportunity of increasing the turn meter. However, with that fact, I believe his A2 is actually strong enough to be used in a speed team for the Clan Boss. He's rather unique. I don't think this will get rid of the fact that you can get rid of lifesteal on your team since the heal really isn't that big, but he does have an ability that applies an attack down and a defense down if needed. He is HP based, so he is stacking a survivability statistic to improve his damage, which is always strong for the clan boss. And like I said, he's providing shields and heals on a very short cooldown with the speed team, even shorter since he is self boosting himself with the two hit. And obviously two hit champions do tend to pull more damage than what single hit champions simply based on how War Master works. So with all three of his abilities being a two hit, he's definitely going to have a high yield in the clan boss. This is something else to keep in mind if you are an early to mid game player. And a final conclusion, like I've said before, if you have the opportunity to fuse this guy, you decide you are going to skip the legendary. This is a champion that I would highly recommend considering in that process and not just thinking Fane is the only good champion in this fusion. And now, just before I end this video, I'm going to kind of drop a bomb on you guys. The next video I'm going to make is actually going to be Kaiden. And I'm going to tell you right now, this champion is the best epic in this entire fusion. And I'm really excited to show you guys why. It's going to shock a lot of you. And I'm going to make a statement in the video with Kaiden that some people are going to say is simply outrageous, but I'm going to explain it to a point where it's going to be extremely hard to argue against, where this guy actually competes with one of the most popular legendaries in the game and is in fact better than that legendary at a very large part of this game. So I'm really looking forward to showing you that Kaiden video. I did give you a little teaser here to get you excited for the next video that I'm going to do. And as always, guys, thanks a bunch for the support. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and I will see you all in that champion spotlight where I show you this monster that is Kaiden.